From the Standing Stone Farm Studio right outside downtown Nashville, it's time for the most ridiculous sports podcast in the world. So sit back, relax, and listen as Bobby Butler and Brandon Bond crack open a cold one and talk all things hockey, pop culture, and complain about everyday situations. It's the Pucks Out Podcast on the Penalty Box Radio Network. Welcome into the most ridiculous podcast in sports and pop culture. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hey, you can find us on the three majors of social media at Pucks Out Pod. Now let's crack open these cold beers and let's get after it. Let's do it, brother. I was uh, not, not much of a pop since I we we kind of had a premature recording. Right? <laughs> it was, we, uh, we started doing the show without hitting play. So. Bobby blew his load a little early, everybody. <laughs> so uh, no, these are. Y- you're not a fan of this beer. No, this beer a, is um what I would call not great. It's the Buffalo Sabres of it's beer. It's the Buffalo Sabres of beer to you. I'm a fan. Lagunitas hop stupid. Uh I'm a I enjoy it, but I'm a hoppy guy. You yeah. know, I, I like I like the hop. So it, it you know, it's always interesting to me. You get the beer every week, and yet you still Well, I'm trying to suffer. change it up and I'm trying to like, you know, I just, got yeah. it. I got it, but you're making yourself suffer. I'm bro. selfless. It's, what can I say? That is you're I, ju- I'm a giver. You're doing it for the pod. <laughs> yeah. You're doing it for the pod, man. Yeah. But uh, all right, this week we're, we've got plenty of news to cover. We're covering the NFL draft. Uh, we've got our current playoff picture. We've got our last section of tank, rebuild, future, or push. Super easy this week. And uh, we got our games of the week and uh, a shitty joke of the week. So let's move uh, straight in. Uh, how are you this week, bud? Doing doing pretty good, man. Got the uh, got the old hair chopped. I uh, grilled out this weekend. You know, weather's getting better for that. So uh, as you heard Last year, I grill. I love to grill out uh, all weekend. I, I know you're the same. Yeah, we got Mother's Day coming up. Uh, we're gonna be staying up. Me, my, me and my brothers are gonna be staying, and Dad are gonna be staying up late, uh, doing a Boston butt. Nice. You know, uh, doing it's for 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 the mom for Mother's Day. She said that we're. I, I'm getting my second COVID vaccination that day, so I was like, you know, I'm down. I don't know how I'm gonna be feeling. Some people are not feeling great. So then the family group chat turned into everybody's just going to kick my ass. <laughs> uh, and mom said that, you know, no fighting on Mother's Day. And I said, no fighting on Sunday. Best we can do. <laughs> OK, uh, but no, I'm, I'm I'm really excited to go in uh, and actually meet meet our boy Manny Blue. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited about yeah, that. And, but uh, the you know, May Day, yeah. I mean, you know, that's our stomping grounds, as you said in the first recording. Yeah. But you've you've been known to not record. And then steal my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to steal your thoughts on the. And on for the those who wonder what we're talking about, uh, we've got our May 20th uh, Manny Blue show at Six and Peabody. We've got a June 26th uh, tailgate live record, and uh, we just recently <laughs> booked a uh, I probably the uh, third or fourth weekend in July uh, over at Mayday Brewery over in Murfreesboro. Love it, man! I'm I'm super excited. We have. You've been pushing me to the limit, uh, making me go to all these places and drink and record <laughs> videos and drink. And uh, now we can just write it all off. We just yeah, we're just going to write off our drinking. Not, <laughs> you know, not that we not that our family and friends didn't already write off our drinking. But uh, but now we can now the IRS is going to have to take our write offs as well. <laughs> how about you, man? How you been doing? Pretty good, man. You know, help my mom move, you know, the. We record on Tuesdays. Last night there were some tornadoes, and luckily she's safe. The house is in pretty good shape, but her uh, house is that she was moving out of got hit a little bit, so that kind of threw a wrench into things. So I'm going up there and going to help with that the next couple of days. Yeah, shout out to Mama Paula being safe. That's obviously the most important thing, uh, you know, and also not paying twenty eight thousand dollars for movers, as yeah. Bobby uh, assumed. Well, so. she, when someone says twenty eight fifty, I, I kind of assume twenty eight thousand five hundred dollars. No, no one does. No one does that. That is purely a you thing. That's a you. <laughs> problem yeah <laughs> well then she should just say 2800 when you just say 2850 i'm like oh well paula's got to be exact okay <laughs> she's got to be on the money uh no pun intended yeah. <laughs> uh all right let's uh let's jump straight into the news everything you need to know about what's happening on the ice it's time for news from inside the boards Tom Wilson's had it again. Uh, Tom Wilson fined five thousand dollars, which is a laughable, uh, you know, punishment for a. I just feel like we should make Tom Wilson's suspensions a, a segment 
and yeah. like more often than not we'll get to use that segment yeah. <laughs> yeah it would be worth every penny to get the 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 intro for that segment made i don't know <laughs> though bro like this seems like a little brawl type of deal uh, dude like, no for me the brawl is fine it's the slamming his head on the ice and it's man, bro, punching him from behind ah bro that's i mean they're in a they're they're squaring up like the slam in his head on the ice came with the throwdown, dude. I mean, I just. I, I, but look. we've already they've already established that like sticking your like leg in, but like wrapping your legs around him and then like it wasn't a slam down. He like wrapped his leg around his foot and threw him down. I vaguely recall that Sidney Crosby took PK Subban's head and he should have been it, penalized for that. Grasped it behind the the back of the head and literally sl- that's to me was slamming someone's head in the eye. Like, bro, like a scuffle where your head hits the ice. I don't, I mean, I, I can understand that he got a fine and got. I don't think it'd be as bad if he wasn't. If he wasn't who like, he was. Yeah, if he wasn't like, a habitual perpetrator, uh, perpetrator, then it wouldn't be that I bad. Think but that like, they he should, does it like, so much. I think that they should send these videos to, to people with like their face blurred out and their numbers blurred out. And then they give the penalty. You know, like yeah, but no. Well, at the same time, like some you, the his his penalty should be stiffer than a first time offender because he's obviously not learning. So he, he well, should, right? But that's what I'm saying. They should give their recommendations, and there there should be like a stair step, okay. and they'd be like, oh, well, this guy's had it four or five times, so then it goes up x amount. You know, I mean, I'm not worried about Tom yeah. Wilson getting you know suspended, uh, but at the same time, like. I don't know, man. You know, yeah, I, I'm I listen, we're, we're being, I'm definitely being a lot easier than the New York post said, which was that he should be banned for life for uh, attempted murder on attempted Panarin. <laughs> oh my goodness. What? I mean, there, that guy, we're talking about a guy that literally has had death threats and was attempted to be murdered by his former country. <laughs> I think yeah. that I think that given Tom, the yeah, choice, NHL must ban Tom Wilson for nearly killing Artemi Panarin. Like, bro, come on! I I'm not sure that you know me saying that I don't know that it was as <laughs> egregious as they're saying, and then the attempted. Mur- I don't. I think that there's got to be some sort <laughs> yeah. of middle ground in between those two things. <laughs> Maybe leaning closer to the attempted murder, but definitely not close enough to where we're charging the guy. Like. Yeah. What what if the police rolled up on the ice, dude, and they just arrested him? <laughs> He's just arrested. <laughs> Would they be on skates? Or are they just running out there? That'd be sick, dude. Honestly, <laughs> they have that'd little, be amazing. Little, uh, little lights on the top of their hockey helmets. It was like it would. They they like trans. <laughs> they transform the Zamboni into a police vehicle. <laughs> it, they're like, is is that the Zamboni or is that a military police tank that they're rolling out on the- both? Probably the military police yeah. tank. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that. Uh, but they're like, yeah, let's send it out. Like, should we send guys with riot gear? They're like, yeah, he just tried to kill a guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, see, Seattle Kraken made their fi- final payment to the NHL. So now they are officially a team. I guess you could say it's time to release the Kraken. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm even going to let you have that. Pun, I dude. was just reading it and I didn't realize you put the joke in there. So that's I my did. bad. No, it's all good. I, I stole it online. So <laughs> you won't, yeah, I mean, I stole it's it. Not like I thought it was original. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, that phrase has been said before. Um, but yeah, I'm, you, you know, know people, officially he's, officially. Be, he's being, he's being humble. We are the first people to ever say that. I, anything else is fake news. I've created that phrase. Yeah. So, but it's no, canon. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the league, Kraken. You know, I don't I don't quite hate you yet. I'm sure after the expansion draft, I will, because that's how I felt about Vegas. I was excited for them to be there. And then they stacked up I think this team. because they did so well. Well, no, no. But I, you know, I once they stacked up that team and got all these great players, I, I really do not like the new draft expansion draft format. Like they really allow I mean, they really allow for a team to not only compete, but become better than a lot of these lower, lower teams yeah. anyway. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I think, uh, I think it's going to be a great addition. I hope Seattle embraces them and doesn't lose them like they did the Super Sun. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. We got our current playoff picture uh, as of Tuesday, the 4th. Also, may the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you guys. It, this is coming out on, you know, Revenge of the Sixth. Uh, yeah. Si- this is coming out on Revenge of the Sith. Want to this give is go? coming out. Yeah, third go. <laughs> this is coming out on Revenge of the Sixth. But 
Today, for us, it's May the 4th be with you. Carolina, Florida, Tampa Bay have already clinched in the... Uh, Discover, some, Central. Discover Central. I actually gave that to you over here on the side, bud. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Uh, Preds could uh, be clinched uh, by the release of this show if they win in, if they win in any way and Dallas loses in regulation. Right. Uh, then Washington, Pittsburgh, Bruins, and Isles have clinched the... What is it called? Mass the, Mutual the Mass East. Mutual East is all finished up. Um you know, there was Shuffle, a water shuffling there, for yeah, position. There is a water bet that will have to be paid out soon. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, <laughs> because and the one, the one person that did not bet <laughs> gets the victory yeah. on it. Uh, Leafs and Oilers have clinched for the Scotia North. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that the Habs and Jets are close to clinching. They both have 51 games played uh, with 57 points, and the only team that could potentially overtake them would be Calgary who has 50 games played with 47 points. So we're pretty much on the cusp of, uh, of the jets and uh, the Abnadians clinching as well. I doubt yeah. that flames are going to win all their games and those two teams are going to lose all their games. So. Uh, <clears throat> Vegas abs and the wild have clinched blues five points ahead of the Yotes of three games in hand. And <clears throat> listen, every once in a while, Somebody is wrong for the first time in their life. And uh, I think it's that time that I admit that for the first time in my life, I was wrong. You uh, had a good run, bro. St. Louis. You, almost, you almost made the, the massive call. I, realistically, let's not blame this on the Blues being great. Let's blame this on the Yotes being bad. Yeah. The Yotes were... Uh, I'm happy been, to do that. The Yotes have been bad down reality, the stretch. The last 12 games, the Blues have been good. They've beaten a good Vegas team. They've beaten the Wild a couple times. They, they, they've looked well, Vegas has been clinched since, like, Nom. So, like, <laughs> you know, like, I, I just don't, I, I'm not seeing Vegas put it up, uh, you know, put up the, the same team they have earlier, which may be a, a disadvantage to them clinching so early. As much as, you know, I appreciate you coming out and admitting that, you know, when you're wrong, you're wrong. I do want to give you, you made a really, at the time, bold call that has just barely not been correct. Yeah. I mean, you you were not, you were not completely off. It wasn't like they kept playing like they were playing when you made the prediction. Yeah. So I'll give you that as well. And all I said was that they would be bad and they were bad. You said they would not make the playoffs. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to ignore that one. <laughs> I was talking about hey, the first prediction I made. It, it's close. And it's still mathematically they possible. Haven't cl- they haven't clinched yeah. yet, bud. Yeah. And so, you know, you don't want to you don't want to go too hard on the other side of the blues because if we get here next weekend or next week and record and the Yotes have clinched, <laughs> you know, you don't want to have sold yourself too short. So yeah. it was a close call, it was a bold call, and um, it doesn't look like it's gonna be successful for you, but it uh, Looking at how the season played out since you've made that prediction, it wasn't the worst call that you've made, even though it's apparently the first time you've ever yeah. been wrong. So <laughs> before we move on, looking at the, all, the, the poten- as of where we set right now, the potential four seeds in each division, which four seed do you think has the best opportunity? Uh, I, I mean, I think that it has to be the four seed and whatever whatever ends up being the four seed in the mass mutual east has to yeah. be your favorite which will right now be the islanders yeah i mean yeah but it the, has yeah. to be because they could have very easily have been the one seed in yeah. that division we're talking about shuffling between minor who do you points. think has the hardest road the west or the central fourth fourth spot? um i do have the playoff format here the format for the stanley cup playoffs has been the has <clears throat> has the top three teams from each division, Atlantic Central, Metropolitan, and Pacific, uh, receiving an automatic berth to the postseason. The other four playoff spots go to the two wildcard teams in each conference. Uh, therefore, the top seeds in both conferences play the lower seed wildcard teams in the first round. So it looks like the wildcard teams are going to be facing off. That's uh, huh. For to play the top seed, and then the two and three seeds will play each other. So it looks like there will be some sort of play in round different than what I read earlier, but all right. maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I read please it as, correct yeah, me. I, I mean, I, I have to find out, but I'm pretty sure it's one place four. All right, we did a quick look up, uh, and yes, so there are no wild card teams. It is <clears throat> the top four teams in each division will qualify for the playoffs. There are no wild card teams. The first two rounds will be played within division one versus four and two versus three format. Um, uh, you might recall this format from the old Patrick Norris and uh, Smythe and Adams division. 
birthdays. Well, for this year, it is back. And then they're going to, they'll reseed based on regular season points. Good. I like reseeding. Right. Yeah. Uh, So one versus four. So who, so your question to answer your, the long route to answer your question, which four seed will have the toughest time? Yeah. Who do you think? Who do you think? I mean, I think it's got to be between at this point in time, the blues, are the Preds, right? Yeah. Preds are going to de- because I mean, we've gotten slayed by, I mean, I think Dallas has as well by Carolina yeah. and all year. Um, blues. And it wouldn't, we wouldn't be in much better spot if Florida took the number one spot. Our right. best case is if Tampa takes the one spot. Honestly. honestly. Well, I, I don't know. We've, we've played some, pretty good games against Florida. I think playoffs would change things a little bit. Uh, but no, I would say that the, the, the best road would be whatever four seed happens to be in the East. The toughest road would be whatever four seed happens to get the, um, to get uh, in the central, the blues, I think, you know, could have a tough road, but I mean, you know, it's one of those who knows they've got guys that have been there before and won cups before. And so, uh, so it could be interesting. I think that the uh, Scotia North, I think that whoever ends up in that four seed, I mean, they've been, these teams have been beating each other up all all year long, and the Leafs are very prone to playoff chokes. So um, honestly, it might be best case scenario for uh, for the Scotia North four seed. I don't know that I would want to play the Oilers right now. Uh, if I'm if I'm being honest, uh, you know, Jets Oilers should be a good matchup, or Habs Oilers should be a good matchup. But I think the Oilers are hungry right now, and not having to play 82 games for two of the best players in the NHL are going to provide a massive benefit. All right, let's move on to outside the NHL. Now that you know what's happening inside the boards, time for the rest of the headlines with. News from outside the boards. Medina Spirit, Kentucky Derby winner, 12-1 to 1 odds uh, with his jockey, John Velasquez. The trainer, Bob Baffert, sets record with a seventh career win at Churchill Downs. Pretty impressive. I mean, I mean a 12-1 to 1 odd winner. I mean, he was a massive underdog. So, uh, you know, congratulations. You, I, I, you think we're going to see a triple crown winner this year? Not this year. I just no. don't feel it happening. <clears throat> you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, if he goes out and wins the, the Preakness, you know that, I mean, he was such a underdog for this, this race and obviously will probably have better odds for Preakness, but you know, if, if that ownership wants to pull him from the Belmont and for, if he wins the Preakness, obviously, you know, it, 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 it like keeps the stud fees so super high that like it's always that yeah. possibility that he could have won. I mean, usually these guys are so rich that that's, that extra stud fee doesn't really yeah. mean anything to him um, like it like it really used to. But uh, I mean, you know, congratulations. It's uh, one of yeah. the greatest two minutes in sport. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's a crazy you, you sit around all day and you drink. Hang out, watch some of these lower horse races. For two minutes. It's it's amazing to me that, you know, that we get so excited about these horse races and they're they're done. That's yeah. it. It's all over. So I think uh next year we might be we might be able to go next year. Oh, that'd, uh, be that'd be bro. sick. Yeah. That'd be sick. There's gonna be some yeah, I'm wearing a hat. Oh like yeah. a dope hat. I'm wearing a big old top hat. Oh, no problem. Yeah, like a like an Abraham Lincoln esque. Yeah. But like style. ridiculous like too, way too big. Monocle. Like like I'm ducking under and to get into doors. Oh, no doubt. Or like, just a super oversized cowboy hat, but not one of the foam ones. Oh. Like get a custom made super oversized cowboy. They're not cowboy. gonna let you in the box with that, bro. They're gonna be like, nah, bro. <laughs> I don't care how much you pay for these <laughs> tickets, bro. You go and put on put on a uh a newspaper boy hat. You know, you're good yeah. with that. But uh don't be ridiculous, buddy. This is an oversized cowboy hat. This is this is the Kentucky Derby, not the local rodeo yeah. partner. This ain't Daytona. <laughs> They're like, see ya, partner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers saga, I believe as of Tuesday, the highest odds are him going to Denver. And, oh, with, bro. and with that, the their Super Bowl odds, people put so much money on Denver. The uh, odd- as a as a Aaron Rodgers dynasty owner. And Aaron Jones, dynasty owner, and Devontae Adams, dynasty owner. Obviously, for those two guys, it's not as great. 
him going to Denver because I also I also roster Jerry Judy. Bro, that would be sick for me because I also picked up Jordan Love last year. That could be good beneficial. Even if he goes to the Raiders, that might be okay for me. Dude, if he retires, bro, the three yeah. Pete is in, in jeopardy. Yeah, I think he uh I, I believe he he wants to go to Oakland more. That that's or no, I'm sorry, Las Vegas. Yeah. Well, Vegas. Yeah. Um but I'm he, I'm you know, I'm interested to see. I you think he's really going to retire if he doesn't get moved? I don't. I don't think he's no, going to retire. I think he'll be. I think. I we'll think be now that he's been there. called out online by by Terry Bradshaw, Terry Bradshaw pretty much called him a coward today. Oh, because everybody is. You know, I would imagine that everybody. Terry Bradshaw in the pretty world, much called him a little whiny baby that he's would, not going to do anything. And I would it's imagine like, it's like at this point he's like, you know what happened? Terry Bradshaw lost his championship to an Aaron Rodgers owner, so he's trying to like go to him and be like, oh, you, I, I bet you won't do it. I, I bet you won't do that's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's honestly probably digging him into the retirement more. Yeah, because exactly. he's like, I don't care what Terry Bradshaw. He doesn't even remember saying <laughs> saying the thing that like, he said. It's like, bro, you said that in your underwear. You forgot to put pants on. He's like, did I forget or am I just Terry Bradshaw? Oh, no, I'm an baby? old man. Don't did arrest I me. Did I just Terry Bradshaw? That's like that time that he got really mad thinking that people were going to take his money for that contest. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, I'm, I'm really interested to see what will happen there. Uh, I mean, the un- most unfortunate part for me is I usually just toss rumors off as that. But when your boy Adam Schefter is saying stuff like Adam Schefter knows what Aaron Rodgers is thinking before Aaron Rodgers knows yeah. what Aaron Rodgers is thinking. I do so. like the fact that Terry Bradshaw, who's a senior su- citizen in his rip said, well, why don't you stop being a baby and just retire and go do your little jeopardy thing? It's like, dude, you know, you it's watch like, jeopardy every day. It's like, no, he doesn't watch jeopardy. That's way too smart for Terry uh, Bradshaw. Him feel dumb. He is a price is right guy. No question. Up until the point Bar- Bob I mean, Barker left. He's not a Drew Carey Bruh, guy, though. He's a Barney guy. Let's be real here. He's watching the daytime kids. That's shit. maybe a little smart for him. <laughs> if we're if we're being completely honest, Teletubbies. Terry Bradshaw is a SpongeBob guy. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Because he's dumb, but he's likable. He's a likable cat. Like I don't hate Terry Bradshaw. I just find his opinion sometimes not noteworthy. All right. Uh, the NFL draft was this past weekend. It was, uh, I, th- I thought it was pretty good. Uh, we did Me a pretty too. good job kind of predicting what we kind of thought would happen. Yeah. I think you, you, I think you wrote it down, uh, last week. Yeah. I have a, I have a few different things that, that we had, um, for sure. Uh, we were both right on the, the quarterbacks, uh, how many would be taken. We were both wrong on Devonta Smith going over. Waddle, I wasn't a fan of that pick. Yeah. I don't think it was a bad pick, but I just wasn't a fan of the direction. We kind of talked about how Tyreek Hill is like brought into this league like we got to have speed, which is why Henry Ruggs went over Jerry Judy last year. I think that it is ridiculous for Waddle to go over Jalen Smith or Devonta Smith purely because he's faster. I mean, we're talking about the Heisman trophy winner. We're talking about milliseconds of speed difference. I, 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 Tyree kills a freak athlete that you can't really compare to other people. Yeah. He has so many other skill sets. I think a big winner was most certainly the lions hey, getting Sewell at seven. I mean, Sewell should have gone fifth uh, to the Bengals. I mean, it doesn't matter if you get the best receiver in the draft if you can't protect your quarterback and are having to have random people passing the ball. Titans had, uh, you know, an okay draft. I mean, but now one of the guys that we've drafted is already uh, in trouble with the law. So that's, you know, traditional Titans. You said they avoided a guy purely because of his previous issues and they drafted a guy that then got... Then the day after he got drafted was arrested for assault <laughs> and charged with assault. Uh, I mean, I think the Patriots are big winners. Even if Mac Jones doesn't work out, it was a, a, a mo- most certainly a steal. I didn't like the pick of Trey Lance to the 49ers. Uh, I, I, are you feeling in a similar I, I vein don't know of that? About it. I mean, I, I, I just find it difficult to take a North Dakota State quarterback for his potential at three, you know, I mean, we saw, and I, and I'm also a big Alabama quarterbacks traditionally don't do well. We haven't seen an Alabama quarterback like Mac Jones. He's not Greg McElroy. Okay. You know, he's, 
he had he had some massive passing skill sets that I, I think really should have gone three personally. But uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm not Kyle Shanahan, so yeah, you know, it's not really really up to me. Um, you know, Chase Pitts to the uh, to the Falcons. Justin Field, what do you or Justin Fields? What do you think about about him going to the Bears? Do you are you? I like it. Or I I don't hate it for the Bears. I think they needed a kind of a change of pace style quarterback. I, I didn't I didn't hate that. We both said there wouldn't be a, a draft a draft a trade within the first nine picks, and there wasn't. There was one at ten, so we got we got lucky. A, a rare. I did say I think one would happen within the first fifteen, though. I said not nine. I think you did. first yeah. fifteen. Yeah, uh, uh, it's a rare interdivisional trade. That that happened with the Eagles and Cowboys. I think it actually worked out for the Cowboys. I, I think that uh, I think that they got a a good value from doing that for sure. Surprised about J.C. Horn going over Sertain, if we're being honest. All right, let's go ahead and move into our tank rebuild future or push segment. We've got the Bruins. The- uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, Toronto Maple Leafs, Oilers, and Capitals. Guess what? Literally every team has clinched a playoff spot. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna just agree with what you put below all these. Push, push. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just push. I mean, we're talking about the uh, a bunch of the perennial powerhouses, and also we're talking about the Oilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, but seriously, in Toronto, I guess. Uh, uh, these teams are all built for a push. Uh, they all have great players. They all have, I would say, I don't know if I would argue equal opportunity for cups, but I would say that they're all pretty much as close to cup ready as you can be um, for for this late in the season. So all push. I think this is our last tank yeah, rebuild push. We'll need, we'll need so to find some new stuff. Made it super easy for us. Yeah. So appreciate it. Games of the week. Bobby and Brandon do the work so you don't have to. The best from around the NHL and what to watch. All right, record update. Uh, I had a pretty good week. You know, I, I picked a lot of good games. Uh, what you, did, I you did great. I gave <laughs> you I gave you your comeback opportunity. I'm going to yeah. go back to regular picking. You want to give them the record update? Yeah, um, I've got a good amount of wins, a good amount of losses. Now I'm uh, 37, 37 and one. Uh, you are 39, 31 and five. Uh, so I, I, you know, mathematically I'm still in this. Uh, but let's see. Uh, Thursday night of release, I've got Carolina beating Chicago. Uh, I think now it's you know, listen, Chicago's not in it, but they want to get all those young guys out, prove to them that they deserve a spot. Carolina wants that number one spot, man. Uh, so I think that's going to be a good game. I'm I'm going to be picking live because I have not chose my winners yet. I think you should flip a coin for it. I have uh, <laughs> the Habs playing the Leafs Thursday the 6th at 6 p.m. I think that I'm going to go with the Leafs, even though I think that the Habs are playing for that playoff spot. I, th- I think the Leafs are not interested in allowing them a, a win to kind of push them up the standings. I'm going to go with the Leafs. That's Thursday the sixth at six. Thursday the sixth at six p.m. Uh, Friday, Washington Capitals versus Philadelphia Flyers. Listen, Flyers, you disappointed me this year, but I still love you. I'm going to make the same water bet for next season with Davey, but I've taken the Capitals. I think they want to lock in that first spot, and they've only got a couple games left to do it. So I'm taking uh, the Capitals over the Flyers on fr- on Friday. Uh, for my Friday game, I have the Red Wings playing the Blue Jackets. They're both playing for nothing, so I feel like it's an equal opportunity for neither of them to do anything. Uh, Friday the 7th at 6 p.m., going Blue Jackets, though the Red Wings have been playing a yeah. lot better lately. Uh, so I would not be surprised to see wings come out and uh, win that game. What do you have on Saturday? I think yours is before mine. Yeah, I have the Lightning playing the Panthers. Um, we were kind of trying to figure out games that, you know, mean something a little bit. I think that these two teams are both shuffling uh, in position for the playoffs. So I feel like that's two good clinched playoff teams that will still be going after each other. Yeah. I have, I, I initially wanted that game. I saw you had it. I was going to take lightning though. Stole it. Okay. I mean, you are welcome to switch it back in. 
I got the Panthers on it. The Lightning has have not been playing great uh, to me lately. Yeah. Uh, lost a game to Detroit last week, and then barely won a game against Detroit on Sunday, which happened to be the game that I picked Detroit. Uh, I should have picked them for the other yeah. option, <laughs> but uh, but I do have the Panthers winning that. They're playing good you hockey know what? right for now. This, for the sake of excitement, I'm going to swap out my fourth game. Uh, and I'm going to take lightning in that same matchup on Saturday, the eighth. Do it. Okay. Uh, all right. But yeah, so my third game, I, I, got, it for you. Yeah, I got the, uh, wild versus the ducks. You're switching. I'm sorry. You're switching that for which game? My, I've got Tampa and Florida on Monday. So okay. I'm going to just swap those two out. All right. So I'll just, that way we got a little, uh, sure. that we can watch it. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so the, uh, I've got the wild versus the ducks, the wild. Listen, they, they've been playing great. They, I think they want to get that second spot. Uh, I don't know if they if they have what it takes to get the first spot, but they're gonna they're competing, uh, and they're definitely gonna want to stay ahead of uh, St. Louis. So I've got them beating the Ducks on Saturday. Okay, not a not a bad choice there. My fourth game, I have the Stars playing the Blackhawks. This is Sunday, the ninth at six p.m. Apparently, I was really attracted to the six p.m. time slot. Uh, that's mo- apparently when well, it's I'm hard to pick some not when they've they got like nine games a night at six p.m. Exactly. <laughs> Stars Blackhawks. I really want to pick. The Blackhawks this game. I'm going to pick the Stars, though, because if they win and, you know, that's a possible, you know, them going for the four spot, it's a win win for me. The Blackhawks win, awesome. I'm glad to hear it. I've got a couple games in hand on you. Plus, if we're going winning percentage, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really okay. If you had a bet on it, where would you put your money? <clears throat> stars, probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd put the I money, agree. I'd put the money there on the, on the stars. Uh, but I'd probably wait to like mid second period when the odds are better because the game's going to be close. I think yeah. it is going to be a close, uh, either high scoring game close or low scoring game yeah. close. I think close is really what I'm I'm looking at. It's still so. wild to me that they have 14 regulate uh, overtime losses. That is such an insane That's amount of a overtime large losses. Large amount of overtime. Losses. The Preds have two. You would never even think that the Preds have been to overtime. Like when they get to overtime. You can generally count on a win from the Preds, yeah. uh, which is which has been crazy. We usually are an overtime losing team, yeah, um, which is good. I mean, but it's you know it's also unfortunate because we generally don't win in shootouts, and they don't well, play we, three on three hockey yeah. in uh, but, in the playoffs. Yeah. So. But we've no this year we've uh, we've done really well in shootouts. I think we're undefeated in shootouts this year. Yeah, but I don't think. But I usually we've been winning it in the yeah. overtime. It's itself, mainly thanks to Ryan so. Johansson and his broken controller move. It just he, uh, it it screws with goalies the so Hansen. much. Yeah, the stop it's Hansen. insane that they keep getting fooled by it. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's not that they're fooled by it. It's, it's just, like it like gives him that amount of time to decide where. I mean, there's only a select amount of goal that the goalie can cover. I mean, they can't wacky waving ar- inflatable arm to man him you know that's what like, i've been doing out there that's what i, I mean i yeah. just throw my stick out yeah that's probably why you would never get to a shootout bob <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh well i don't know why i didn't get a shootout well they scored 15 goals on you bud i was this close <laughs> yeah uh so yeah so i had the stars beating the blackhawks but it's one of those that i will not be upset if i'm yeah. wrong um all right uh my last game of the week i've got well why don't you give us your last game of the week because uh yours is before mine yeah uh Switched it up, went with the 7 p.m. game. This is Monday the 10th, Hurricanes, Predators, and I did throw you a bone, buddy. I'm going Preds on this one. I think it's solid. I think, uh, I think that they're going to be able That's to That's the last uh, game of the home. season. Honestly, I think it could. I think for that fourth place, it could come down to the 56th game of the season. Yeah. I mean, and I could see. I mean, I'm, I'm as a Preds it's fan. It's stressful. As a Preds but fan. It's entertaining. As a Preds fan, I hope we clinch tomorrow night as a hockey fan yeah it's always nice to see it go right to the end and to be fair the predators are involved so it's gonna go right to the end so yeah. uh my last game i've got at the avalanche first the vegas golden knights listen that is a gonna just be uh, that, that's gonna be a great matchup man great hockey two mm-hmm. good teams fight it out but i've got the abs winning on monday night yeah trying to trying to hold it on to that two spot i think that i almost picked that but i was like i'll let him get it get a chance to pick it if he if he should want i agree i think the abs are going to win that game as well uh i mean we're close we're i mean we've been battling all year i it was only last week that i really had a uh, a firm grip on on these games and you could very easily go out and win five games this week and me go two and three and then we're sitting pretty, pretty close. So and it comes down done. to us picking a bunch of Vancouver games. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it just so, pick them at that point. So, you know, and it, it almost might be, you know, 
towards that last week of the season, depending on what games are available, we pick the same game and we coin flip uh, to pick which team is going to win and yeah. go in a head to head battle. Type Hopefully, of it's deal. not like, oh, it's Vancouver versus the Oilers. Or- it's Vancouver versus Vancouver. <laughs> it's their COVID team playing yeah. their regular team. <laughs> All right, let's move into joke of the week. The weird. Corey Perry. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't- Wild. I think that I think the first read was a good one. Now, now I'm overthinking it. Outlandish. Each sixth chick sat on a stick. A little tongue twister. And downright dumb. You're kidding me. It's time for the joke of the week. <laughs> this is a real I shitty am, story. I am so <clears throat> glad you picked this because I literally have a screenshot on my phone <laughs> of like, all right, this is a great joke of the week. And then I came in and I, I didn't even look at the news article. I saw your headline, a shitty situation at a Nashville bar, and I was like, dude, found it. <laughs> <laughs> man, arrest, man arrested for swinging colostomy bag of police officers, and this happened at... Uh, well, he was... I mean, he was swinging it around in the bar, right? Yeah. He just whipped it out. Yeah. Uh, this happened at Kid Rock's bar, which honestly is very... I would expect fair, it. Fair, fair. Yeah. It, it seems like at Kid Rock's bar that swinging your colonoscopy bag would almost be a requirement of yeah. the of entry in there. He does have a a, a forehead tattoo, which is in, intriguing. I think me. it says Kappa Sigma Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I'm not sure what it says, but it 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 is amazing to me that the attention is drawn away from his forehead to that beard, bro. Or I guess what you could arguably call a beard. It looks like a large scale handlebar mustache in which he is like kept half of his mustache pretty on point, And then he just let the other side Listen, just go. He was just celebrating when best looking at Kid Rock's bar. <laughs> He, that I mean, he is he's got to be one of the one of the better looking individuals <laughs> there. Uh, it was multiple charges. Apparently, he's been doing this like a couple <laughs> yeah. of times. Like this is not just like his like one chance that he swung his colonoscopy bag around. He's been doing it around area bars for quite some time. I am thinking that we have a real shot of getting this guy on the show. <laughs> Do we need a third host? I mean, because yeah, we'll be in the splash the zone, but guy. yeah. I'm, this is the guy. Like, yeah, we're definitely going to make him bubble wrap <laughs> up, but, I mean, to be able to say this guy won his colonoscopy bag on the show, that would be pretty sick. They identified him as John Doe in court. Which well, his I'm, name is Nicholas Newhart. Well, right, but yeah. like, please said Nicholas Newhart identified as John Doe in court. Did he document. identify himself? Or did they just not want to, uh, did they not want to embarrass the guy i'm not really sure why you're calling this cat john doe it seems like they're just like look we're gonna exercise your right to not talk to us because you got poop in your hand if we're being (laughs) on it that is wild he was drunk and holding a bottle of beer blocking at the outside emergency exit at kid rocks (laughs) uh security told the defendant to leave the outside door area, but he refused. They then flagged down the police to get assist, uh, get assistance in having him leave. I mean, it's, you know, it's Broadway. They got yeah. cops everywhere. Newhart then took out his colonoscopy bag from the inside of the front of his pants and started swinging it. Hit two of the officers yeah. with the feces. I'm very confused <laughs> on what's happening with bouncers nowadays. Like, as a bouncer, if somebody's blocking the exit, you don't... What, you just Spartan kick him out of the exit and close the door. Well, you don't want to see the thing is that guy just started his shift. You don't want to bust a bag of shit all over your shoes. Oh, I'd be going home. There ain't no, if, if, if I got shit thrown on me as a bouncer and someone said, you got to finish your shift. Well, I'd be like, throw mm. the shift, but you're saying Spartan kick, like you're Spartan kick that you're probably have your mouth open when you're Spartan well, kicking. You don't, and that's you don't know that. Going into well, I'm mouth. saying you kick him out before, like when he, when he, before, because he I was said, outside. That's what they're oh, saying. He was he doing was, it already. He, no, he was outside. The emergency exit. So that becomes public property. Oh, I thought he was like blocking the exit from the inside. If that's the one, I'm just like, I'm just just ignoring. I'm like, I'm like, listen, I get paid less than 20 bucks an hour. I ain't dealing with this shit. (laughs) They said he was drunk when he was taken into custody without any further incident. 
He could not stand straight on his own. His eyes were bloodshot and glossy, wet looking. That's poop. <laughs> With the smell of alcohol coming from his person. Again, that was just the poop. That yeah. was the- <laughs> He has been charged with uh, the the thing is hitting the police officers have really probably bumped up the charges here. He got two assault charges on the on the police officers, a disorderly conduct and a public intoxication. I feel like that is not nearly enough charges for what we can throw yeah, at bro, this guy. This, call it what this is. This is just terrorism at this point. You're using biohazard weapons in downtown Nashville. I, I'm not. I, look, I'm not a big, huge guy fan of guantanamo bay but if there's any time to take an american citizen to guantanamo bay it's throwing your shit bag around yeah no doubt like we are gonna have him on the show though that's (laughs) that's a that's a no doubt you just wait all right let's move into our most interesting athlete of the week brandon you've got it for us this week what do you got yeah it's uh we had talked about it last week, and you know I know how we traditionally will talk about things and then just never bring it up again as if it never came up. But we talked about Ron Nachai uh, having uh, being the only professional game in which 27 strikeouts were recorded. Uh, I briefly ran over it last week. There were some interesting facts to it. Once I actually got into it and actually started doing my research, it became apparent that I was not even doing it justice uh, by talking about it last week and briefing over. This was the Appalachian League Class D, so it was not an MLB game as we thought, but I mean, it was a professional sporting event. He played for the Bristol Twins and were playing, was playing the Welch Miners, and the game was at Bristol, Virginia. Obviously, as we talked about, 27 strikeouts in a game. Basically, every out was recorded via strikeout. He was feeling sick before the game, uh, before the game started. And was in, in his sickness, he just continued to feel bad. His manager, and I, I guess this is a 50s thing because I was not familiar. Stephanie also not familiar when I brought it up. His manager sent for some cottage cheese. <laughs> I. Is this a it, it was a typo. It no. was cocaine. It's supposed to be cocaine. That was, he was already doing the cocaine. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, the cottage cheese was like a big factor in like multiple articles I read. I mm. guess that was a thing. I guess it's so you forget that your stomach hurts because you're being forced to eat cottage cheese. I'm not sure, but he sent for the cottage cheese. Uh, he'd been sent down to Bristol for rehab due to an ulcer problem that he had been experiencing in tra- spring training that season. Despite the upset stomach, by the fourth inning, batters had just tried to start bunting. Just to get just to not get struck out, they've tried to start bunting on this guy. And he just continued. They just foul it and then eventually strike out while trying to bunt. That's wild. It, the funny thing is, is that early in the game, a batter was retired on a ground out. So there goes the 27 strikeouts. Um, but in the ninth inning, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this rule in baseball, the ninth inning, the catcher had a ball pass him on a third strike. And so if you don't catch the third strike as a catcher, the runner, the batter can run to first. And if he makes it, he's on base. So the catcher had a ball pass him on the third strike, which gave Ron the opportunity. And he obviously got to base. Gave Ron the opportunity to strike out the fourth batter of the inning, (laughs) giving him the 27th strikeout. It was a no hitter, not a perfect game. He had hit one batter. Um, He obviously one reached base on an error and the missed third strike allowed a man to first. It continued. This is uh, the, the, this is the first and last time this has ever been done in professional sports. Uh, This wasn't a luck thing. For Ron Nachai, though, uh, 20 n- strikeouts and 19 strikeouts in his two previous games. <laughs> uh, the next start, he struck out 24 and only had two hits. Uh, he had it was it, the record in professional baseball, 51 strikeouts in two games. Probably will never be beat ever again. His MLB debut was At the end of the 1952 season, he joined the Pittsburgh Pirates. He pitched his first game in August that year. He was, he finished with a one and six record with a 7.008 ERA. 
He struck out 31 and 54 innings, but he did walk 32. Um, in 1953, he got, uh, he got drafted into the army, but he was discharged with that recurrent ulcer. He was training to come back to baseball and he tore his rotator cuff. Current medical advancements would have obviously allowed him to rehab and get back into the game. In the 1950s, that was not the case. A torn rotator cuff was basically the end of your, your whole career as a, as a pitcher, or I would imagine any type of baseball player whatsoever. He's currently 86. And a super successful businessman. This <laughs> dude is a baller, dude. This is way better than your dude that ran up hills. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a way more interesting athlete. Uh, so I think I did say he got five outs in one inning last week. That was the only thing that I said incorrectly. It was four outs in an inning. It's almost like that catcher dropped it on purpose and let him get to base. For sure. Yeah, I mean, tw- but still, even if he would have just ended with 26 strikeouts, that's wild, dude. That is absolutely wild. Ron Nachai, you're our most interesting athlete of the week. Hype, dude. I am super excited to have read about this. He had a very short yeah. career. And he's the reason cocaine is illegal in the uh, MLB. That is that is it. That and cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to move into our questions from the internet. Uh, we've got we've got two today. Um, kind of superhero related. Uh, so let's start off with. What would your quote unquote bat signal be? I mean, I feel like the the obvious easy answer just got to be a beer, right? Like, yeah. it's like a, you know, that's the obvious answer. I guess you're probably wanting me to think about it. I mean, I haven't really in, thought about mine yeah. either because obviously mine, I was also like, oh, beer. But now and then that's why I was like, but yeah. I know he's going to say beer too. So yeah, go- I mean, beer is like just the obvious thing for us, though, is the problem here. You know, I mean, I can't think of anything else that I would even like pay attention to if it went up <laughs> into the air. If a large scale light of a beer came up, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's be like, what's mm, up. Be like, yeah. And then, but they got to have a second one that's like that, that just says the word free and they put it above it. It's like, oh, okay, right. I'm it's there. like, bro, I've got like 30 beers here. Why would I even need to come? They're like, free beer. Okay. <laughs> then there's the montage of us putting on our of the spandex. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the montage of us like doing not. We're just going to get the beer. Like we <laughs> hadn't even put any clothes on or anything. Like we're just like, we're going to go get some beer. I can, I can like in my mind, not even really think about anything else that I would say would be yeah. my bat symbol. We probably you know? should have prepped this before too. Probably so thought about some stuff, but I think that people love that about us is that we go on the fly and we stick to our guns, which is yeah. you know, most of the time our guns just happen to be beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's an excellent one. What would your superhero catchphrase be? Because I feel like I know what mine is, but I feel like people would like people would be like, oh, he's he's a fucking. It's more villainous because it. My, what I say all the time is, hey, it is what it is, and I feel like I would get done like, like just destroying okay. half the city, like and like like a Batman style yeah, of. And they're like, uh, beer guy, you destroyed half the city. Millions are dead. It's like it is what it is. <laughs> See that you definitely wouldn't have to have that fake voice because everybody knows who we are. <laughs> it's uh, like, dude, you're not wearing a mask. You're just. It's like you have like, your name tag on. It's like. You know that there was not even a villain here. You just got really drunk and destroyed the street. Like that does not make you a hero. I like that. I like that. It is what it is. I think that that works out for sure. Uh, ah, that's a tough one for me. I can't just (laughs) AO. Yeah. I think I'm just going to go with, Hey, I think, I think it will be like a little small asterisk beside it. Be like, Hey, you got a beer. (laughs) Yeah. I don't really, I don't, you know, I mean, you know, we're not bad guys, but I, I don't force, I don't, I just don't see us as heroes, Bobby. I feel like we're neutrals. You know, we're neutral. We're anti-heroes. Anti-heroes. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, uh, we're like John Walker. Yeah. Well, I mean, he turned pretty villainous towards the end. Well, Well, like the Punisher. No, but then he ended up being good by saving that one car. (laughs) (laughs) But he didn't really save it, though. He just grabbed it for a second. Yeah, but he dropped his shield and lost his whole shield. So, like, and it was only like six people. His shield was like aluminum. It It was only like like six people in that whole thing, too. So, like, (laughs) it was an armored truck. I feel like they would have survived. Like, yeah, they definitely would have survived. I agree. And also, the Winter Soldier was going to catch it. But also, like, Saving six people, you were only 
you only save five more people than you gruesomely murdered in the streets. <laughs> so like you're not even that close to be. Yeah. So I like feel like, you know, like the, the anti-hero thing really worked for us. Uh, that for, you know, we don't really care about the super strength. We have super ability to get really drunk when it's an inopportune time for most people around us. I think that that's our superpower. Time to cast your vote. Vote your cast. Choose your pick. Pick your choice. Make a decision and take a side for this or that. All right. So when I wrote this, I thought it would be a little bit harder to pick one. It was honestly more it was hard until right now for me. Because um, when I originally wrote, so it is win a NASCAR race as a driver or the Kentucky Derby as a jockey. When I originally wrote this, I had win the Daytona 500 or the Kentucky Derby, they can, like the pinnacle of each. Yeah. But even still, just any, I mean, I would say NASCAR, uh, NASCAR is, man. Like, because I, I feel like, because uh, nobody, uh, nobody remembers the jockey. Remember, everyone remembers the horse. Right. Yeah. That, that is the, that is the exact thing that I thought. I mean, that's the pinnacle of horse racing. Besides the fact that if you won the Kentucky Derby, then we got to lose like, Nine to fifteen inches of height. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's like a lot we of gotta years. be like that's <laughs> way too many years. That's way too many years. Besides the fact that even any NASCAR race has got to be way cooler than winning the dirt. Yeah. To me. Now, what if you won the Kentucky Derby as a horse? I mean, you had to be a horse. You had you to become be a, a horse. horse. But I mean, it's a pretty good life. I mean, I mean, until you break a leg, then if, it's a short if, life. If, or even if you did, if the jockey became as famous as the horse. If I got this as a person, I got the same contracts for like stud fees as the horse would. No doubt. I'd be the Kentucky I mean, Derby then, I mean, guy. I'd be sitting there like I'd become like, hey, no, I, brought, I know I can get paid stud fees. So here's a gallon of my stuff. I feel like for real, though, any NASCAR race is way more impressive yeah. to me. Not to than, mention like our personalities. We couldn't get away with being who we are at it, like at the derby like like right. we, we win we're just doing donuts on the horse yeah yeah exactly <laughs> like and, we, we got tattoos on the horse of our I sponsors always feel like i always feel like the trainer gets way more credit yeah. than the than the jockey ever does now besides the fact that like again it's like a two minute type of deal like it's your, your two minutes to find you whereas like a nascar race like four hours yeah. of like hardcore like having to deal with like people going like 200 miles an hour around you and stuff. I feel like it, that's now, a super now, impressive n- feat. question. Would you rather podium at Daytona 500 or win the, or the Derby? Win the Derby. Yeah. I mean, the winning is the pretty big aspect yeah. here. So like going and coming in third place at Daytona is not as cool as like being able to, like, Some dude, tells me though, like that the, NASCAR driver who got third place still getting way more women than the winner of the Derby. Well, that's just because he can see the win. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's not way. Lo- I don't know, dude. You gotta. You, you you're the jockey winner of the Derby. Like it's a, it's a quality versus quantity kind of thing. I feel like. Yeah. Like NASCAR, you might have well, the but quality. Also, if you win the Derby, you if got you quality. win. The, if you win the if you win the Kentucky Derby though. Then you get to go and race at the Preakness and the Belmont, you know, like that's pretty, that's a pretty big deal. Like even if you only ever got to, I guess, I guess the better argument would be win a NASCAR race or be the jockey of a triple crown winner. Yeah. You win all three. Yeah. And, and even that, it would still be close. I feel like NASCAR is still more impressive. But at that point, I would think I would have to. It also just seems like more fun from like our point of view. Like we can just like, like, I want to see like now listen if I saw the winner of the derby just like do like you know ha, you know going into the center and just like tearing the grass up in the horse you know then it'd be well, dope I, doing I, barrel racing know, in the middle I think I've talked about this I've been to Churchill Downs the week after the derby happened and like I bought you know this is cr- going to sound crazy I bought a bunch of drinks there uh <laughs> and shocker but they come in like different glasses and I still got a couple of them and it has like every winner of the Kentucky Derby on this glass. Just the horse's name though. Not the, <laughs> not the dude that rode the horse. Just the horse's Imagine name. Imagine if they did that for NASCAR where like they had a list and it was just it Chevy, was just Impala, the Chevy Impala, Chevy Impala, Chevy Impala. It was just the car <laughs> name. Or no, no, not even, not even that. It would be essentially like, oh, the Miller Lite one, you know, like. <laughs> 
like uh, the ally, you know, ally. M&M. Won. <laughs> M&M won this one. Now, and UBS. I, think, I do think it'd be funny if they started doing as much uh, sponsors and logos in horse racing. That'd be sick if they just tattooed <laughs> these horses. Just a big old thing, a big old Fig Newton sign in front of the horse. <laughs> yeah. So I think the better argument would be win a, a NASCAR race or win the triple crown and I'm still as going the NASCAR. jockey. And me too. I think that it's still more impressive. Yeah. Even if nobody knew your name ever from either, I think it's still way more impressive to win a nascar race i mean besides the fact that like yeah you can probably get hurt riding that horse but dude you could straight up like the great one of the greatest racers of all time literally died in front of our eyes uh racing nascar which is you know not great but you know raise hell praise dale freeze up but uh you know i feel like that's way more impressive besides the fact that you're a little more famous so yeah. going NASCAR, but uh, but if we changed it to a triple crown winner, it would be a little closer. Yeah. All right. Let's move in. It's the beginning of the month. So let's do our what are you binging? Uh, been watching a lot of this uh, show on Acorn TV, which is like BBC and stuff. Whitechapel. Super kind of cool, like murder mystery kind of thing. It's like, uh, like the first one was like a guy who was a copycat killer of Jack the Ripper and they had to catch him. And he was like following it to the T and like they all they. Only like it was just them following, trying to catch Jack the Ripper, but in like modern day. And by modern day, it was like 2012, 2012. So it's like not a real show. It's like a yeah, it's, it's like a, a TV show. Yeah, it's it's TV not show. like a true crime. Documentary. No, no, okay. no. Okay. yeah, um, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. What about you, bud? Um, you know, with us doing it once a month, I've actually been into some different things. Weirdly enough, war movies and shows I've been getting into lately. Saving Private Ryan. Uh, you forget how freaking amazing that movie is dude you know i i'm i was blown away by i had watched it when i was younger but i rewatched it it's freaking awesome yeah, it's a great dude. movie it was such a good movie i mean everybody in there uh does such a fantastic job vin diesel's in that movie for god's sakes bro yeah isn't that crazy um <clears throat> and then uh the outpost uh it's a movie on Netflix. It's actually a true story about uh, a. Oh, I think out- that's Jake Tapper's movie. Yes, CNN. Yeah. yes, it's it's his movie, and you know Orlando Bloom is in it. Uh, that's Always super dope. cool. No, Orlando that. Bloom is my my boy. He died pretty early. It's all good. Sorry, it's been out for a long time. Uh, you know that was super good, and I've started Band of Brothers, which I'm I've watched one episode. Have you never seen it? Never seen oh, it, dude, dude. It's so good. It's never so good. Seen it. First off, it was my dad's favorite show, and it's a, I've seen it four or five times. I'm I'm, I'm one so episode excited in. You're watching it. I'm I'm one episode like, in. I'm, okay, I'm gonna start watching it. That's gonna be our new series we're gonna talk about. Awesome. It's dude. so good, man. Awesome. And getting ready for our uh, HBO podcast if we want to do that. There we go. There, yeah. the Home Pod Office. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Band of Brothers. I'm, I mean, I've only one episode in, but I've, I've enjoyed it so far. But I feel like I have to throw this in there. I've been watching on Disney Plus the Mighty Duck, Mighty Ducks Game Changers, dude. It is so good, bro. It is amazingly good. I am so surprised at how well done it's been. It's six episodes in, and like. You know, it was uh, we were watching it at the same time frame that I think it came out at the same time frame that the Falcon and Winter Soldier came out, or maybe a week later. I think it came out a week later. It, it came out a week later, and like, bro, like we were, you know, I was super excited about Falcon and Winter Soldier, but bro, like I was super way more excited about the the Mighty Ducks Game Changers. So me and Stephanie rolled into we watched. Uh, you know, D1 and D2. D2 is the best of the three. We're going to watch D3 soon, but like, you forget, those are really, really good movies. That's yeah. why they were so popular. It wasn't just a kid's movie that it was, I mean, Emilio Estevez kills it. Yeah. So I, I, I have been super, super, super pleased with the, the game changers. Yeah. Watch it, bro. If you're sure. if you're a Mighty Ducks guy, then you'll really enjoy that. I mean, my boy Gordon Bombay's in it. We got to see a few of the uh, of the past ducks in this past episode. You know, Fulton was there. Your boy, the Bash Bro. Uh, Adam Banks was there. Ken Wu was there. You know, Connie was there. Guy was there. I mean, it was it was really uh, Averman. He was still there. Uh, so it was really good. And you're a huge Letterkenny fan. Yeah, well, what's his that name? Guy, is the, uh, he's the coach. The coach. Yeah. It is 
so good. I'm, I feel so dumb just hyping this up so much, but it's like a really good show. And I hope you uh, get into it yeah. man, because I would I would like to hype it. As far as what we've been binge drinking, man, a lot of beer we've been funneling. For those, funneling those, beers. Like I'm funneling like videos. three to five yeah. beers a day. Make sure you go check us out on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter. Go check our videos out. We, we, we're starting a new YouTube video series, our public service announcements. Yeah. Check us there probably. Maybe not once a week, but we're, we're getting some content out public there. Public service announcement number one is like extremely important for fans yeah, of this show. For sure. Uh, I did have, a, a, as far as what else I've been doing besides just funneling beers, the Sweetwater Hazy IPA is great, man. You, I don't know if that you would dislike it, but it, it's it's not bad. It's not as hoppy as as say the the hop stupid that we are drinking now from Lagunitas. All right, let's move. Uh, let's move into what snap in your stick. Bobby and Brandon are about to find out exactly what snaps their sticks. All right, we're running a little bit over, so we'll try to be a little quick. Uh, but this past weekend, the NHL had 15 games on Saturday. That was also Kentucky Derby Saturday, and I think it was the third day of the NFL draft. Correct. But then on the next day, day on Sunday, they had one game. One game. What are they doing? That's ridiculous. It's, and not just that, but most of those games on Saturday, you can't watch. Even right. if you have a premium package, if you pay 100 bucks for that premium package, it's all blacked out. Which we did. <laughs> Yeah, which we did pay. We now, did luckily, pay that now we pay, we pay. We ended up paying a little bit more for the NHL package, and so like we're not all of them are blacked out. We got lucky with that. No, but that, we could have watched some, but yeah. you can't. But I mean, as great but, as we, can we watch are, because we have AT and T something. Well, but as great as we are, we can't watch 15 games at once like yeah, that, you know, it's like maybe at some point our podcast will be big enough to where we could have like 15 TVs going at once, That's and we can dream, watch man. every game that we wanted. But what a ridiculous schedule! Besides the fact that you have how many games that have to be replayed next week, you couldn't have rescheduled yeah. some games for that day. You literally that got an extra week sense. to play any of these games. Uh, uh, mine is something that we talked about on Saturday that happened during the game while we were watching. How? I don't understand. I don't understand how embellishment can be called as, as a secondary penalty after the guy takes a penalty. Embellishment, by the nature of it, should only be called if it's the only penalty being yeah. called. If a guy gets tripped and he maybe sells it a little more than he should have, that doesn't matter. He was tripped. You're admitting that this guy had a penalty against him. So then to say that he oversold getting penalized, I don't understand it. The only time embellishment should be called. I mean, I'm not saying it can't be double called. Let's say a guy cross checks one guy and then another guy fakes a you know yeah, fall or something. Yeah. But that in my that in my argument is a lone penalty. It's separated from but Eric Halla got a embellishment call after getting what was it, cross checked? He got cross checked and then they said, You're faking it, but we're also gonna send the other guy. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It snapped. My stick. I don't understand it. By the nature of the call, it shouldn't yeah. be all. Agree, hundred percent. All right, guys, stay tuned for, uh, later this week for the uh, fantasy show. We will see y'all next week. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Pucks Out Podcast. To see what other ridiculousness the guys are up to, check them out on Twitter and Instagram at Pucks Out Pod.